Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Beth and I am the Bookworm Trait. And today I'm bringing you a video which is slightly outside of my usual content, but it is also a video that is very near and dear to my heart. And for that reason, I feel very nervous about filming it. And this is prepped over for the disorganized. In this video, I'm going to be specifically talking about myself. I have a learning difficulty called dyspraxia. It is National Dyspraxia Awareness Week and I really wanted to share my experiences because there are a lot of us out there but no one ever talks about us. An organisation, or should I say disorganisation, is kind of our thing. Yes, I am saying that dyspraxics have a monopoly on disorganisation. We own it. <laughs> so this video is going to be specifically talking about how I have managed to organise myself in a way to prep for Preptober. I haven't finished my prep, but I will talk about what I'm doing and a lot of the things that I'm doing are things that I have done in the past and have worked for me. Dyspraxia does not affect everybody the same and people who are disorganised are just not disorganised in the same way. So this video is not a one size fits all quick fix for your disorganisation issues. This is just what I have done. This has taken me years of trying multiple different methods until I found a mishmash of what suits me. Before I get into talking about the specific methods that I use, I want to talk a little bit about your writing setup. Now recently I was watching an episode of Pointless, my favourite quiz show, and it was an author's special. So everybody on the show, all the contestants were authors, published authors and successful authors. The host of the show asked one of the authors about his writing method and where he liked to write and the answer this author gave was kind of rude. The author basically said that he can write anywhere, in any situation, at any time and he kind of looked down on people who have to have a certain setup who only can write at certain times or in certain places. Having dyspraxia means that I can be easily distracted and so I could not go and write in a coffee shop. It wouldn't happen. I would spend the time staring out the window, staring at the people around me, probably listening in to some conversations because I'm also really nosy. For me to be able to sit there and write or plan, I need a very specific situation. I need to be at home and I need to be comfortable. So this could be sitting on my sofa, sitting in my bed, sitting on a comfy chair, but I couldn't do it at the kitchen table. I would fidget too much. I need complete silence. And if that's not possible, then I can only listen to ambient sounds or something like movie scores, so music without words. I need snacks and drinks. <laughs> if I don't have snacks and drinks to hand, I'm gonna tell myself I'm hungry, I'm gonna use it as a distraction and I'm gonna get up and go and make one. I need all my resources at hand. I need a notebook, I need post-its, I need pens. If I don't have everything set up perfectly, I cannot concentrate. The reason that I say this is that I have seen and read so many people give advice saying not to worry about your environment, just write. And it's not always that simple for some of us. If you need a specific setup, do it. Don't let anyone tell you you're wasting your time or you're procrastinating. You know what you need and if that's what you need then go for it. So we're going to get into how I prep. I do have a notebook with me where I have written notes on this because another beautiful thing about dyspraxia is it makes us very forgetful and I really want to make sure that I cover all the points. So if you see me looking down at the notebook then I'm just making sure I give you all the info. So step one of the prepping process is obviously your idea. Now I can't tell you how to generate an idea. That's gonna have to be your own thing. There are idea generators if you are really stumped, but I would say that most of my inspiration comes from my dreams, my weird brain and nature documentaries. Don't know why. What I would recommend that you do 
is that you keep a writer's notebook. Now, however you wanna do this is fine. I personally use the notes app on my phone because then it's something that I always have to hand whenever something inspires me. What I will say is it is so important that you keep all these ideas together in one place. Again, our dyspraxia or our disorganization makes our minds a little bit chaotic sometimes. And I was at the point where I had multiple notebooks, which all had different ideas in them. And so if I ever actually wanted to go and revisit these ideas, I had no idea where they would be because I'm a notebook hoarder. So what I do now, as I said, I just use the notes app on my phone and I will jot down anything that inspires me. So sometimes this is something as simple as a sentence. So it could be something I'd seen in a nature documentary. As I said, I get a lot of inspiration from nature documentaries specifically to do with imagery. So one of the things that I have in my notes is shadow kelp forest. This is just some imagery that I saw in the documentary, My Octopus Teacher. It's something that I wanted to keep a note of if I'm ever going to write a book set underwater, which I don't have any plans to do at the moment. But if I ever do, that's probably an image that I will want to recreate because it was just so beautiful. And also that's a great documentary. So if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Thank me later. I also keep lists of names in my notes. These are either names that I have researched for a particular character. I personally really like my character's names to have meanings behind them sometimes, not always, or just names that I have stumbled across that I just really like the sound of. I also keep songs that I find particularly emotive in here and works of art that I have seen that again, I find particularly emotive. I also jot down dreams in here. I have very vivid dreams and often I feel like I could write an entire story off of them. And sometimes a whole outline just comes to me and I will write that down. So for example, I have in there a story called What Happened to Francis. This would be a supernatural thriller and I have the entire outline just typed out in my phone if I ever want to write it, which at the moment I don't, but it's there. The idea of a writing notebook is not unique to me. I'm not the only one who does this. I have a degree in English literature and in this degree I took a lot of creating writing modules and this was one of the things that they told us to do. It was one of the first things they told us to do. So if writing is something that you really want to get into, I would highly recommend that you keep a writing journal or writing notebook or use your notes apps for it, create a folder for it. Whatever works for you, do it. When it comes to dyspraxia, we are often daydreamers, but we are forgetful. So your writing notebook will help you use those beautiful daydreams and not forget them. Apologies if I am in a different place or if the angle has moved slightly. I do film on my phone and I just had to take a phone call. But it came at a good point because I'd finished with step one and I was ready to move on to step two. Now, I personally am very character motivated when I write. So I will almost always get a really good sense of my character before I really start to work on my plot. And it's only my main character that I will focus on at this point. My side characters, my romantic interest, my antagonist, they will be dealt with later. But at this point, I want to get a really good sense of who I am writing about. If I'm writing from multiple POVs, then all of these will get the same treatment at the start. I might get ideas for plot as I start to create my character. Again, they're going to go into my writer's notebook or into my outline, which I'll cover later. So one of the very first things I do is to create a really simple table. Now you can do this however you like, whether it's just with simple pen and paper, in Word, in Excel. I personally use Notion and I will get on to why I use Notion a little bit later on in this video. And as I said, this is going to be a really simple table. This is just going to be a list of all the characters in the book. I just want to capture here some very basic information about my characters. I want their name, their age, their gender, their race, and then I just have a field for other. Now, the reason that I do this is A, just to keep track of them, just so I know who's in the book, and B, and this is really the main reason why I do this, is so that I can look for any similarities in a nice, easy format. One of the similarities that's quite easy to miss is in names. 
you don't want to have a Hannah, a Haley, and a Holly because that's going to be confusing for your reader to keep track of who everyone is because the names sound so similar unless there's a reason for you having a Hannah, a Haley, and a Holly. It also allows me to see what representation I have in my books. So being someone who is both neurodiverse and mixed race, it's really important to me that my books are diverse and it should be important to you too because diversity is good. We live in a diverse world, let's have diverse books too. I will then just add and remove characters as I go through the process of creating my story. The second thing that I do at this stage is do a character profile and this is in my opinion the most important part of character creation. I know not everybody feels the need to do this, but I would highly recommend it. And more than that, I would say that your character profile for your main character should contain way more information than you would ever include in your book. By using a character profile, it really helps you to understand the character. Whilst it's probably not important to your story that your character only drinks coffee before 10 a.m., it's important for you to know that. We all have little quirks and those little quirks make up our personality. Maybe you have an energetic character and coffee is way too overstimulating for them, so they literally just use it as a pick-me-up in the morning. By having that quirk about them, you now know that fact about them. Maybe they are a night owl and they need that coffee to pick them up before they start the day. By having this quirk, you now know that about your character. Maybe they don't really like coffee and so they only drink it in the morning because that's what everyone else does. Maybe they are a follower of other people. Again, by having this quirk, you now know that about them. Another reason why it's really important to have this in-depth knowledge of your character is that your character's personality will affect the plot of the story. You need to understand how your character is going to act and react in certain situations. If you have a passive character, how are they going to resolve the obstacles that you are throwing at them? If you have an aggressive or an abrasive character, how are they going to find peace with someone? Maybe they can't. Maybe you need to think of an external influence that is going to cause this change to happen. By knowing your character well, you know how they're going to interact with the plot and therefore how you're going to get from point A to point B to point C. Character profiles are my favourite part of outlining. I love them and I want to talk about the resource that I use for this. So I use a website called One Stop for Writers and I do just want to say that this is not free. You do have to sign up for a subscription. It is $9 a month or seven pounds and a penny if you're in the UK. But I really think it is an amazing resource. And if it's something that you are able to take advantage of, I would highly recommend it. For someone who has dyspraxia or for anybody who is just simply disorganized, this really helps with character creation and considering how your character is going to affect your overall plot. It is written in an easy format that is accessible and easy to understand and prompts you to think really deeply about your character. One of the key things about this website is the interactive nature of their character profile builder. It will prompt you to pick an emotional wound for your character. This might be something like being raised in the care system, being bullied, those kind of things. And based on that, you'll be prompted to pick certain personality traits. You'll be prompted to think about how that motivates them, why that has had an effect on them, what lies they tell themselves based on that effect. It's more than just background and history. It's a real deep delve into the character's personality. Now, whilst this character profile builder can only be accessed through the subscription, there are options on their website where you can see information for free. So they have an emotional wound thesaurus where you can access certain parts of the information around emotional wounds. They also have books, so they have literal thesauruses that you can also purchase and read through. Even if the paid subscription is not something that is possible for you, I would highly recommend looking into emotional wounds more because they will really help you to create deep and complex characters. Now, before I go into step three, which is when I come to doing my actual outline, I just wanna take a side step into Pinterest. <laughs> now I use Pinterest boards. I love Pinterest. I think it is such 
a great resource for a writer. I like to create Pinterest boards for my books because number one, it's fun. <laughs> Sometimes outlining, plotting, character creation can be very draining, very tiring, and sometimes I just can't focus. As another part of our dyspraxia brains, sometimes they just don't want to focus and they're just like, no, we're not doing this today. We want to stare out the window. We don't want to do any work. In those instances, if I'm like, I need to be doing something productive, I will often head over to Pinterest. Some of the things that I like to get from Pinterest, I like to get ideas for physical places in my book. So for instance, the novel that I plan to write for NaNoWriMo is set in a stately home in the UK. So in my current Pinterest board, I have lots of images of stately homes. By looking at these visual representations, then when I come to write descriptions, I can look at them and I can look at how shadow and light play. I can look at the colours and the textures of the rock. I can look at the overall size of them. These are all little tiny things, but when it comes to writing them, actually seeing it makes it easier for you to create a good visual image. The second thing is maps. A big part of dyspraxia is our spatial awareness and our understanding of directions. I cannot follow directions for the life of me. No. If you give me directions, my brain just tunes it out. It literally will switch off and I'll just be like, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to walk this way and hope for the best. I also find it really, really difficult to grasp the concept of space. I could not guess how long it would take to walk somewhere or how, like, if you ask me how big 10 meters is i have no i have no idea so i like to use floor plans and maps because they help me to be able to visualize what a space looks like so again going back to my current novel set in the stately home i looked at floor plans of stately homes what i've personally done which is not something everybody would need but I need it, is I then loaded one of these floor plans into Procreate, which is another piece of software that you have to pay for. I believe it's a one-off payment of £10, but there are definitely free options and free ways of doing this. You don't need to do it in Procreate. But I downloaded my floor plan into Procreate and then I drew over the top of this so that it fit the floor plan of my actual novel. And this really helps me to visualise what's going on. I'll insert a picture of it so you can see kind of what I'm talking about and as you can see it is very very messy. Another thing about planning is remember that this is for you and it's not for anyone else so if it's messy and disorganized but it makes sense to you then that's fine. I also like to get ideas for scenes from Pinterest, specifically romance scenes. <laughs> I don't know what it is but seeing a picture of two people kissing and how they are holding each other really helps me to write romantic scenes because I can see the hand is round the neck or the hand is on the side or to the face and how the head twists. It applies to any scene where you are trying to place a human in a physical position that you maybe haven't been in. This Pinterest sidestep is definitely not something that you need to do i just really enjoy it and if you want to do it great so we are moving into our final step and this is the plot outline now out of all the steps i would say this is the most personal one and what i am doing might not work for you whatsoever i would say yes keep a writer's journal it's going to help you I would say make sure you do character profiles, it's going to help you. I would even say use Pinterest, it's fun and it will help you. But my plot outlines and how I do this is specific to me and my brain and this might not help you. The best advice I can give you when it comes to finding a way to outline that works for you is to just keep trying. Keep trying different methods until you find one that sticks. Now the software that I use for my planning is called Notion. It is a free app 
or free website you can also use a web-based version of it and I know that it is available on iOS devices I'm not a hundred percent sure about Android I believe it is but I will put something in to let you know for definite and this is one of the key pros for me with Notion again dyspraxia mind trouble focusing trouble organizing my time so I know when the mood takes me to write and I have the time to write I want to do it there and then and being able to access it on my laptop on my ipad and on my phone means that wherever i am wherever the creative muses speak to me i can go so my outline is done really in two sections section one is what we all know as an outline and i break this down into two parts so i do my character plot in which I outline my relationship developments and my character development. And then I do what I call my action plot. Sometimes I call it my magic plot. And this is where I talk about the plot part of the story. So what happens and when. So if we use Game of Thrones as an example here, and we're simply just going to focus on Eddard Stark for this. I'm not going to do it for every single thing in Game of Thrones because this would be a very long video. <laughs> so in the character plot, I would look at his relationships. There isn't much character development for Eddard Stark. So it would simply be his relationship with Catelyn, his relationship with his children and his relationship with Cersei and the king and how those change over the course of the book. In the action plot, I don't want to give spoilers for Game of Thrones, but I feel like if you don't know this by now, then where have you been? I'll just put spoiler on the screen and just mute me until the spoiler goes just in case you are one of the few people who don't know what happens in the very beginning of Game of Thrones. In our action plot, I would purely be focusing on his investigation into Robert Baratheon's murder and leading up to his beheading. Once I have these two plots down, I then do a timeline. I do my timeline in One Stop for Writers, but there are plenty of free websites that you can create a timeline on literally just google timeline creation you'll find it on this timeline i will just put my points from my action and my character plots and that then just means that i have an overview of what's happening in the story and when and that i know which character beats i have to hit and which action beats i have to hit this is something that works for me because it's not super in depth. I'm not plotting every scene. I still have some creativity left in me when it comes to actually writing it. The second thing I do during the outline stage in depth, but I will do during the character creation stage as well, is research. And again, I have this in Notion. So I'll have separate tabs. I'll probably have inserted some kind of graphic so you can see it, but I'll have separate tabs. And in there, I will put my research. Now, it is very, very important that your research is all in one place and that that place is easy to find. And it's very important that this is organised. Anything else, let your chaotic brain do what it wants. But with your research, it needs to be organised because if you need to go back to find something, you need to be able to find it. So to give you an example of some of the things that I research. So my character in my NaNoWriMo project is a librarian. So I need to understand how one becomes a librarian and what that job entails. I have a character with a specific mental health disorder. I want to make sure that my representation of that mental health issue is good. I don't want to be misrepresenting that illness or showing it in a bad light. So it's really important that I have clear research and that I can find information on that mental health condition as and when I need it. I originally was going to have a character completing a PhD during the course of this novel. I'm not having that anymore so I don't mind showing you this. So you can see I click on PhD and we then have subheadings. So there's only two in here because I got rid of this pretty early on 
but we have general information. If I go into general information, it's just going to give me general information about PhD. So this would be information that I found that I'm not sure. I don't have a specific header for. Beneath that, I have an option for three stages. And this is because when I was researching PhDs, I found that they typically occurred in three stages. So I've written what those are. If I had continued, this would have a lot more information in it, but it doesn't. So the final thing I want to talk about when it comes to outlining is quick note. Now I said that when I was doing my character creation, sometimes I would have ideas for the plot and I need to make sure that I write these down because if I don't, my dyspraxia brain takes them and throws them away. These might be something like quotes that I suddenly think, oh, a character might say this and I think it's beautiful the way that I've kind of worded it. So I might pop that in there. It might be a particular scene or it might just be a plot point. I just pop them in quick notes. Sometimes I attach a picture to them because I just like aesthetics. But this just means when I come to do my writing or my plotting that I have those and I can pop them in as and when I need to. Okay, so that brings me to the end of this video and I think it's a long one, so I'm sorry guys. <laughs> But thank you so much for staying with me and I hope that you found this helpful. As always, please leave me your favourite love heart emoji in the comments down below. Mine is orange. And if you have any questions for me or any tips, then please leave those in the comments down below as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And hopefully you'll come back and see me in another video soon. Bye.